Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. And this video is our reaction to This Is Us Season 4, Episode 15. This is an episode where I think we end up learning a lot of different stuff. I, I think we do, we do have, I guess, a revelation when it comes to Rebecca in this episode, but I don't think it's necessarily something that is shocking a lot of people out there, and I think this is an episode that's sort of more about building up key moments that are going to play off a lot more later on down the road. Yeah, and I feel like, for me, I've gotten some more confirmation on who Kevin's fiancé and mother of his child is. All right, well, we will spell all of this out moving forward, but uh, before we do, if you enjoy this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other updates that we've got coming up. Let's start with your theories then, because yeah. I think, uh, let's start with the fun stuff before we just get to things that are sad later on. Yeah, so everyone's been wondering who is Kevin's fiance, who is the mother of his child. There's been theories that maybe it's Sophie, maybe that it's Cassidy, maybe that it's Madison. After this episode, I feel like there's enough groundwork now for me to land on that it's Madison. And it's for, for a few reasons. They, they left a couple of little hints in here. First, we had the meeting with Kate and Madison where she was like, oh, I'm really sorry, I, I shouldn't have done this, but you know, it happened. And then she started talking about something that I think everybody's kind of looking for in their relationships, which is this really accepting intimacy. So, you know, you wake up in the morning and you look like you've been in a white snake video all night and your hair's all crazy, but your partner is still like, I like white snake, I'm all good. Yeah. That kind of intimacy. And she mentioned that the thing that she fell into Kevin with is that he's seen her with no makeup on, he's seen her at her worst, they, you know, they ha kind of have that, or at least that sort of, she doesn't have to always feel like she's on and perfect and perky and, and made up and all these sort of feelings that she was saying that she doesn't get when she's out there trying to find a relationship with someone else. That's one. Okay. <laughs> Then we also had what Toby said, which was two, when she ended up, Kate ended up telling Toby, yeah, these two hooked up. And then he made the comment, okay, uh, I hope she's not gonna end up as my future sister-in-law. Mm, mm. Here we are, we're leading <laughs> down the path. That's what it feels like. I, I'm gonna push back a little bit. And three. Even before you get, okay, give me number three and then I will push back. When we see them in the future and they're at the cabin at their 40th birthday, that is, this fiance is still pregnant. Yeah. This timeline works out. The timeline works out. Boom. That is. <laughs> it's Madison. I don't think it's Madison for, for sure, but you're, boom. you can boom all you want. I still don't know if it is her. I think it's possible it is her. I think, I think they want us to think strongly, clearly with everything you just spelled out that she is a serious candidate. I recognize that it is partially my own delusion at this point, but I still believe that it is Sophie. And I think that it's going to kind of come around at some point. And I think they're trying to fake us out by putting in all this Madison stuff to make us think that it's the, only, the biggest reason that I think this. It's not like an evidence reason because Sophie is with someone else right now. Sophie is with someone but, else right now. And with the timeline of the pregnancy, like she would have to have dropped her man, gone off with Kevin. Like it would have to be happening really fast for this to really be happening. And it just doesn't feel like Kevin and Sophie's relationship that this is after everything they've been through that that is something that Sophie is going to do. I think they're still end game and that they will still end up together, but I think that the person at the cabin is Madison, that it's going to be a surprise. The big reason I don't think it's Madison, I think, is that back in that cabin flash forward, Kevin referred to her as his fiance in yep. front of Kate. And I'm just, I, and it might just be to keep the secret a surprise, it but is. I just like, why wouldn't he just say Madison? Because clearly, you know, Kate really knows Madison. Why wouldn't he just say Sophie? He's been married to Sophie. That's true. That's, again, like, I think, 
I know that there are people out there that are focused on that fiance word and that it means something. And the, to me, the only thing it means is that This Is Us doesn't want us to know who it is and that this was the easiest way to be able to kind of move on from that, let us know that he's engaged and that that person is at the cabin. Wouldn't it be funny now if it is Cassidy and we've just been sitting here with metaphorical clown masks on her face for the past three minutes? It's possible. But, it's uh, just, it's kind of interesting for me to yeah. come to this because I actually haven't thought that it was Madison yeah, until you this really. episode. No. I, I've been thinking more so that it is Cassidy and I, I have not thought that it's Sophie as much as that would be really awesome and I would really, really like that. Yeah. I just thought that it might be Cassidy, that that would be the surprise yeah. because they've also been together and not not too far off into the distance here. So it's just they they put these little things out there in this episode that weren't like crazy obvious but when mm -hmm. you kind of add all the small moments together they're all kind of adding up to madison being that person i just think this is us you guys have made us suffer enough we have gone through. give a give us a, a win here give us kevin and so well maybe not everybody is pro kevin and sophie but i, I, I am some madison people out there, yeah, there are. what i had never not never but i haven't been on the madison train as much but some of the things that she said in this episode, especially that scene with Kate at the at the diner or the restaurant, yeah. it really hit home with just like, yeah, we've seen her be kind of like silly and, mm -hmm. you know, all these other things about her that, you know, that are just like, oh, it's just Madison being Madison. But we've seen these moments from her like at the hospital where even though Kevin ran her off, she was still waiting in the hallway. 4K. She's not leaving, but like, yeah. okay, if I can't be in there, I'm still here for her. And then having that conversation where she was talking about that intimacy and what it means to her and what she's looking for and that it's already kind of there with Kevin. I was just like, you know what? I'm starting to get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to be mad if it is Madison. I will I will understand it. I, I don't know where it will go from there, but I, I'll understand it. But as I, I think that that debate is at least a lighthearted fun debate, really, for the yeah. most part. And of course, we want to know in the comments who you guys think Kevin's going to end up with. But I mean, the rest of this episode, it is there's just a lot of sad stuff going on kind of throughout. I mean, it is official now that Rebecca has a form of Alzheimer's or some yeah. of the early signs of it. I, I mean, this has never really felt like something that This Is Us was trying to jerk us around on all that much. They just hadn't really named it before this episode. No, and for me, that was the hardest part of the episode because my grandmother has Alzheimer's and she has for over a decade now. Mm -hmm. And it is... The absolute worst. It is the absolute worst. Uh, not just for the people around that are, you know, leaving her memory, but for her. Like, I know my grandma told me long before she ever had this that that was one of the things that she was the most afraid of in life because her family is the most important thing to her and to lose those memories was something she was always really scared of. So when she got that diagnosis, it was bad. And it sort of feels the same way of what is going on with Rebecca. Her family is her number one. And the idea of losing those memories, like it, this episode, it wasn't the cabin, which was such a great episode and really yeah. stuck with me. But this episode got me like right in the heart because of what I have going on. And I do think really that they... They built this episode knowing that that was obviously going to be at the end of it. And I felt like they... They tried to cram in as much fun with Kevin and Rebecca so you could sort of see what she was trying to gain from all of it, which is to kick the can down the road a little bit because she doesn't want to hear the news. She wants to live in the moment and do all this sort of fun stuff. And it, it is fun seeing Kevin and Rebecca go off and do their little uh, adventures of sorts and go to the record yeah. store and the house. And, like, that all was enjoyable, but... You know, you're sitting there watching it with sort of this prevailing feeling of dread that, okay, eventually she is going to have to go and get the MRI results. Yeah, and I mean, there was a lot of stuff that I really liked about that last conversation sort of right before they did. The, the realization or the admission that Rebecca had with Kevin that 
she depends on him for that source to take her away from just facing facing the facts and you know you've got Randall there who is like oh we got to deal with this let's get in front of it let's let's figure it out and that when you are going through something like this that there are times that you just want to have that person who is going to take you out and get your mind off of it and just give you a break and it was cool to see that Kevin is that person and that Kevin has kind of always been yeah. that person for her and just that memories for him going back to be like, oh yeah, okay. It, our relationship has been like this. That was really cool. And it was good to see him put his foot down. Yeah, it was. That, you know, I could see very easily him, not because he's irresponsible, because yes, they could have gotten the results the next day, but just to give his mom more of what she's asking for. Please, Kevin, I just want to have this day and I want it to continue a little bit longer. Let's just grab him tomorrow. He could have said no. But yeah. for him saying, listen, I'm trying to change the perception yeah. of his family, that I'm a goof and that I'm not going to take this seriously and I'm not going to take care of you, I need that to change. And especially while Randall was in therapy, that and he was already saying that he's not trusting that he's gonna go and do the right thing to have Kevin go do the right thing was awesome. It definitely came about at the right time, right? Because we did have that story, like you said, of Randall just completely unraveling in therapy. And you know, it, it's it's fascinating watching him in there because you know, the first couple of seasons, I think in particular, we really built up Randall as this you know, super likable character who feels like he's sort of the perfect guy, the perfect dad, the perfect, and it's just over time, we've seen more and more of that sort of fall apart. And, yep. you know, and there are moments in here where Randall is arrogant. And there are moments in here where Randall feels just downright unlikable. That doesn't mean he's an unlikable person because I love Randall, but it just means that sometimes his perception can be skewed and people we really, really love can do and say things that aren't great. I mean, Randall goes into all of his sort of judgments that Kevin's not capable of taking care of anybody, that yeah. Kate's got her own stuff, that he's the only person who can really do or say anything. And it does sort of feel like, okay, Randall, so is this no one else can do this or you don't let anybody else do this? Yeah, and it was cool to see Randall in this state because, like you said, we don't ever really get to see him like this. This mm -hmm. is this is a very raw version of Randall that we have not had much of a peek into. And at first with this therapist, I was just kind of like, this therapist doesn't seem right for him. And I'm still not sold that this therapist is right. I get the idea that Beth needs this mm -hmm. and that Randall needs this, but I'm not convinced yet that this therapist is the right therapist. Having him unravel and bringing out all of these feelings, that's good, but there are other ways to be able to bring that out without kind of, I don't know, making him go to that point where even just the drip of a coffee is driving him out of his mind. I I wonder that as well. I, I do think we're probably only going to have this therapist. I, I feel like if Randall was going to uh, I, I feel like if they were going to explore it they would have explored it in this episode and I don't necessarily yeah. agree with every technique that she seemed to use but I mean I'm also not a therapist so I don't yeah. know what the right techniques are it was interesting though in a way that we barely actually saw the therapist character with the way it was shot it was so much just Randall sitting there talking Maybe feel like maybe they almost just had Pamela add on for like an hour and they were just like, okay, just read the rest of it when you're away and then we'll just have two scenes of you sitting there. That was such a great line too from Randall when he sat down. He was just like, it's kind of a long story. Do you have an hour? Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. He's still kind of being himself at the beginning. And yeah. It was a really great performance to see him go from I'm still Randall and joking and kind of, you know, funny and all that to just completely unraveled about a coffee machine by the end of it. Yeah, I mean, Sterling is phenomenal. And I, I think pretty much that that's a consensus from everyone within the TV community. He's got the awards of proof of it. It's but, true, but this, yeah. was a, this was something that I haven't seen from him yet. No, it wasn't. And I think it's so cool in season four, we're discovering like actual new things about some of these actors and what they can do and what they're capable of. And, you know, Randall is putting himself in a position where 
he's shouldering so much responsibility, but I think at the same time, he's actually recognizing now that if I want to be a hero to Beth, I actually have to be a hero to myself, and I need to take care of myself and give this a legitimate chance, as opposed to just freaking out that not every single thing is working to his liking and he can't control the situation or control what she says. Yeah. And we have to talk about Toby. So Toby yeah. did not tell Kate that Jack choked. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to actually end up coming up again. I've seen in the comments that people were thinking that maybe that was the reason that they are going to break up, that down the road she might find out, she might find out from the doctor. I mean, yeah. that will obviously come up at some point yeah. down the road. Um, but is it enough to break them up? I just don't think so, especially after his grand gesture. And it was very cool to see that he put together sort of a little playpen of music and yeah. sound and all of that, and then watching sort of the progression as Baby Jack becomes a young man and continuing his music. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. I liked it. Yeah. It gave me the feels. It was a nice way to end. I lo I, yeah, I love that. I love seeing, okay, Toby is sort of a a really important person in Al Jack's entire musical journey and it's great to see how much he loves him and cares about him and he and Kate are in a better spot and yeah I agree with you that I don't I think it's going to be a problem if Kate finds out about the doctor and him check choking but I can't see that in itself being the thing that splits the two of them up because this was Toby going and taking care of the problem right away. Yeah, he did take care of the problem. He took care of it properly. And even if the doctor brings it up in passing, it's just like, what? Wait, he was choking? At some point, the doctor is going to reaffirm that he did the right thing. He did everything right. Yeah. So while she may not have been happy to not hear that it happened, yeah. hopefully she's going to be happy to hear that he did the right thing he took care of it and that he can be trusted to take care of it i just hope that if there is another thing that causes this we find out about it this season and maybe it's a situation where this sort of just kicks up all these other problems and they all cause it kind of come up at once but i'm sure we'll have more time to sort of talk that through because we have a little bit of a wait until the next episode of this is us airs mm -hmm. but we are going to have a preview coming up Yep. with some more information about what you can expect. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. And for now, let's hear from you guys. Overall, what did you think about this episode? Are you glad to have more information about Rebecca? And what do you think is going to happen with Toby and Kate? In addition to all the Kevin questions we asked earlier, share in the comments. And if you do like this video, give us a like, subscribe. And if you do want to support us further, check that link in the description to the Carter Matt store and we'll see you here next time.